and part of part of the and you'll see all the different stages and um, I'm going to show you that this is um this is about a 10 inch tile and you kind of section it off and you start an inch and a half down for the top of the head and end at a half an inch on the bottom the body the upper part of the body is um one third of the body and then the lower part is two thirds and this is a uh i learned this process and it was kind of started maybe before or right around uh you all know erte and erte always drew his costume designs so that they were not proportioned correctly so a lot of times they were next to impossible to recreate his designs because we as women never were in those same proportions so as you know it's a fashion illustration or a theater illustration and the bottom half is elongated and that's the purpose of it and that's why they call it this uh, fashion or theater illustration so my goal is to show you how I always keep it lined up, how I always keep it in my proportions and, um, and you know, just the different stages. So this is my first tile. And this, when I uh, set this, I will always have a line going down so that it's straight. So it matches this side and so far from this side and so far from this side. And the purpose of this line is the balancing line. This balance line is to take and make sure that she doesn't look like she's falling over. We don't want her to be tipsy, we want her to be sassy. When um, you set up your balancing line, you want it to be to the back of her neck, all the way down to the hardest part of her heel so that she is standing on that. That's her strong leg right here and she's standing on that heel. That way this leg can move, can do different types of things and she won't fall over. So, um, and in fact, even though I use this as my original pattern, I can alter her leg or her hand uh, in different positions as long as I keep following the same process. So for me, if I were just to take and do a paper doll you all had paper dolls when you were ki kids. They just looked straight at you and they were shoulders straight across, waist straight across, hip straight across, and two, for me, two chubby legs. You know, I didn't have, um, I didn't have a fashion just, uh, drawing. So I need to, on um, this is, the purpose of this is to show you how to give it motion. So I can do many, many drawings and change the motion of this doll and what, or not doll, pattern. So at this point, I want her to have her shoulder tilted like this, and then about a half an inch down is the her going to be her backbone. And if this was the, her front side, then I would change it so it, it would be the same for her breast line. And then I have the waist. And now see how I've changed the line for the waist. I'm gonna use this as a pointer instead of my finger. The waist is now changed so it's a different direction. And that's kind of giving her that opportunity to um, twist her hip and show uh, some sassiness. And then right below that with a little bit of a fanning is her hip line. Now, when you look from the top of her shoulder to the this uh, most outside part of her hip, that should be shorter than this side. And that's the foreshortening. And that's what's giving her some movement. That's the purpose of this um, positioning of her body. So then we go down to her knees. And again, the foreshortening part is what helps. It's actually pretty much lined up to her hip, but we wanna make sure that the knees are in the correct proportion. So this knee has to line up with this knee with this line. Because I could accidentally, if I didn't use that line, I could accidentally have her knee up here and then the proportion would be wrong and she would no longer balance. She would tip over in real life. And then you want to take and go down to the next um, line of direction, which would be the ankles. Because that's where you're going to see the fact that this outer heel here 
is going to be the strength. And this is where she's, she's barely touching the floor on the, on the other side. When it comes to her head, because it is a fashion design, it's supposed to be not focusing necessarily on her head or her face. So I usually just leave that pretty light and I may add hair uh, later on, but at this point we don't need that. Uh, the real focal point is supposed to be the dress and the length. And we, whenever I do these, I paint them and naked because I need to know that I have my proportions correctly. And by painting them naked, I can get the correct lining up of the skirt and everything. And when we get to that, I'll show you. So I'm just gonna lay this down for a second. And in the process, I'm gonna talk about my layout. I like to wipe my brushes on tissue paper because it's bonded and you don't get lint because lint is an enemy of lusters. I use Turpinoid Natural to clean my brushes. I use Luster Essence to, to thin or work with the colors if needed. I have, I line everything up so that um, I know what I'm painting. I'm gonna make sure that that doesn't go through. So the colors I'm using today are all made in the USA. They're all United States made product. And you will see that they are different. They're all red in color and they are um, extremely thin, like water. And that's the way I like all my lusters. I do work with the lusters from Germany, which I love, but a lot of times I end up thinning them to, to do exactly what I want. And I know that a lot of you all wonder why I thin them. Well, when they're thinner, you will have less problems. When they're thinner, you don't end up with a lot of things uh, flaking off. If it's too thick and it builds a ridge, it will always flake off. You can't stop it unless you learn how to uh, apply the lusters and, and make sure that you're not getting uh, a ridge built up. Uh, the other rule of thumb that I have for my lusters is I have about four brushes. I have a brush that's dedicated to my pink and I write right on it a brush that's dedicated to mother of pearl only. And again, I write on it. I have a, a brush that I usually use for yellow. And then I have my all brush. And my all brush, as long as every time I use it, I wipe it off over here until there is no color, I can go into the next color. The main thing to remember about this process is you will never go to the darkest color first and then go into a light color. You always go light to dark, always, always, always. So um, when I set up my lusters, I set up my first use, my next one, and my third one, and then these will just be little accents if needed, if I feel at that time. And the way I've set this up is light, next light, and midnight blue is super dark, and then my two little accent colors are just um, both one can, they both can be dark if, if I apply them heavily and they can be light if I apply them lighter, softer with a softer touch. So um, since this is my first tile, so this would be like my first going into for my first fire. So I designed my piece. I know I'm drawing to draw her body. And so this color that I'm using is the American burnt amber. And it's kind of a, uh, you know, it's it's a kind of a yellowish, brownish, like she's gonna be tan. She's gonna look a little on the tan side. So I'm using a number 10 synthetic round pointed brush. And when, and I like my brushes to have a little bit of a springiness to it. So when it, when you're painting, I don't like a limp, brush. So think of all of your brushes to be a little bit on the firm side so that they have spring to them. So when I come in here, and most of the time I will be holding this brush up and down because I don't want to hold it like this because once the luster gets into the ferrule, it's much harder to clean. But if it's pointing down, I can wipe it over here and keep it clean. So here's my first attempt with my brush. And I want to, I'm gonna start at her shoulder and I want to 
press down and pull across and lift. And what happens when I lift, it deposits the luster. And now I'm starting to create a shadow. Unfortunately, I don't want that particular spot to be my shadow. So I'm coming down the arm and just lightly lifting up and pulling away. Because more than likely, either I'll finish this hand or I will um, not finish it. It doesn't matter because I'm probably going to cover it up with the dress. But the reason why I want it there is so that I get the proportion on, you know, when she's on her dress so that it comes through at the right spot. So now I'm going to do her shoulder and come down, her hand come across and down. I'm going to wipe a little bit off because I want it to be a little bit drier because I want that shoulder or that arm to have a shadow. So see, this is actually allowing me to have my shadow already here, especially down here by the crease of her arm. I'm going to come across her shoulder and make sure I get her complete shoulder and it's softer and I'm coming down into her shoulder blade. I want just a little bit of a, cur a curve so that our shoulder blade has some kind of a definition. So I always wipe over here just so that I can um, control the amount of luster I have in this brush. And I'm coming down her arm. She's got her hand held differently. Now, if by chance I've totally missed her arm, I just come back with one of these little micro brushes and wipe it back. I get these little micro brushes from uh, Mr. and Mrs. of Dallas. Okay. I'm gonna come down, it should be just down to her waist and let go. Down to her waist and let go. Down to her waist and let go. I'm building up a deposit. And I'm leaving it a little bit less paint in that, in that hollow of her back. So it kind of skirts around it. Um, now, once it sets for a second or two, then I'll give her a little bit of a line through her back. And then I turn it and let it bleed into the other two lines so that there is not a hard line there. I want to soften that. I might turn it some more. Bring it back up and stop there. There, I'm happy with that. Just let me look a second. There. Now, when I come down her hip, I will follow the outer one first and then come back with to the um or the, the far back, her, her balanced leg, and start down all the way to her shoe. Coming down. And already I've, I've developed the shadow back here, but I want a little bit more. So I'm just gonna do it as one stroke coming down to give her a lighter portion on her calf and thigh. Sorry, I don't mean to turn it on you, but I wanna make sure I get it right. And I even have it so it's uh, actually almost um, a little bit heavier here. So it follows the direction of her ankle. This needs to be just a little bit more. So when I copied this on, I copied it on with a non-wax uh, 
graphite tracing paper. The reason why I want non-wax is if I would have used wax paper and traced it on, every place that the wax had touched, it would uh, separate by now. So I want to make sure that I always use a non-wax graphite paper. And then all this pencil marks will disappear when I fire in the kiln. And the other thing is always remember to give it a, a wipe down because we don't want the loose graphite on there because the graphite will leave some fuzziness. I have this two minute rule when it comes to painting things. And by, do, by that three minute, two minute rule, I do one appendage at a time, so to speak. So I did the body, you know, I did the arms work a little bit faster, but I try to always follow that rule because if I don't, it, the luster becomes too dry and I cannot manipulate it. And sometimes I want it to um, still move even after I've applied it. And I want that, they want that hip to be sassy, super sassy. Now uh, you can use other colors. You don't have to use the um, burnt amber. But I kind of like it because, you know, um, I don't know if you guys know what a personal color is, but we all have a tendency to paint our personal color. And this really is as close to my personal color as I can get with lusters. And, um, and it just comes naturally. Oh, I have a hair, hang on. It comes naturally to us because that's what you see in the mirror every day are your personal colors. So more than likely when I do a portrait, I probably will uh, paint my portrait with um, green eyes and a more of a tannish yellow skin. <clears throat> but uh, it's, I wanna make sure I get my highlights right. Okay. Actually, I'm pretty pleased with how she is. I don't need to do anything with her hair with this firing unless I choose to. So sometimes I just mark where her head is, bring it down. And a lot of times I don't even deal with the face. Sometimes I just pull it across and let it have some kind of a highlight. I don't want her nose to be quite that big. So I'll just wipe that back. And that, that's all I did for the face. And I'm gonna, so this is, Fire number one. So we're ready to go for fire number one. Now, if I try to paint the dress on here right now, all I have is just a wet mess. So that's why I have to fire it. So I'm gonna fire that, I'll lay this one down. Well, maybe I'll put it here. All right, so now we have fire number two and this is what it should look like after it's fired. And the heavy lines are where I deposited the most luster. So sometimes, uh, and every time I do it, it, it sometimes turns out a little bit different. And it should, it should never be an identical replica every time when you work with lusters. It's a one of a kind deal. So this is as close as I get to uh, repeating things. So this one, it shows the, the sassiness of her hip. You've got the shape, the basic shape. And then all I would do now is I would add a second coat. So at this point, I, unless you feel I need to, I, I'm not gonna add a second coat because I have one that's already done. So once I add the second coat, it will become, so that's fire, this would be fire number two, and then it turns into the third, third one. And see, she's much more defined. She's a little bit darker. And um, do you need them both together? Mm -hmm. Oh, all right. Just move it. All right, so this one, you can definitely see. And the reason why I really want that outer part to show is because when I do the dress and after it gets fired, I want the, her body parts to show through the dress. And um, I can show you on, on my original piece, which by the way, I want a silver on down in, I think it was at one of the California shows. 
Um, you can see her beautiful slender leg coming down on both sides. You can see that she's got that twist to her. But what's important is where the dress comes, the hemline and the ankles, they match. Where the arms and the, you know, like if I had fully dressed her up here, her arm comes out at the right spot. Because if a lot of times what happens, and I've seen this with fashion illustrations, are the dress is put on and then they put the legs on as an afterthought and you don't know the correct proportion anymore for your legs. And sometimes you'll see that maybe the legs over a little bit and it's not in the right spot. And so this way, I know she's always going to be um, perfectly balanced and standing. So this is, um, this would be, now I'm gonna do fire number three. And so when I did this particular one, I dressed her and I intentionally did this so that you can see the hemline, you know, and the, and the folds and the gathering. So you can see that her leg comes out in the right spot, but yet the cloth is behind here of the inside of the lower part of her skirt and her arm, see her hand totally got painted over, but it's okay because see, then I kept the proportion of her arm in the right spot. And to me, that's, that's the important part. Lusters are meant to be transparent like glass. And so the more you layer them, you know, the more brilliant you can get some of the colors. But when you realize that how transparent they are, because you can see her body through there, I think it, to me, it was, you know, an eye opener for me to realize how transparent they are and how I can manipulate the depth or the lightness of the luster. So to me, it was extremely important. And I, and I really enjoyed that. This particular one, you know, I did her hair differently and I just drew it lightly across and down. Um, but what happens here is, because her hair is yellow, I have to fire it then at 019 because yellows disappear if you go at 017. This one, she's a little bit more um, brown uh, hair. And then I left a space open to take and put a flower. So you'll see that when it comes to the flower textures, I want, I, um, on this one, I resisted out all the areas that were turquoise right along here. You can see them because I wanted to create a floral pattern. Once I had the, tur the turquoise or those areas resisted, then I painted her dress. And I wanna make sure that I get her folds in there and her movement and, um, and proportion wise, you know, I, don't, I don't want this side to be bigger than this side. So once I had the, so I used dark pink for her dress and Sometimes, depending on what, the dark pink turned a beautiful kind of purple. Uh, it just all depends, you know, and I think it's because, and I'll tell you why. So after I put the dark pink on, then I took off the red, the red resist, and then I plugged in the turquoise as, you know, right away, because I, again, I like to paint fairly fast. Then I took a little micro brush and dipped it in yellow, and I dotted all the way around each of those little paisley marks with the yellow. And I believe that the yellow and the turquoise combination with inside the wet dark pink altered the color just enough to give me a lovely purple. So every place I went with the yellow, it's a dot, it's just a dot of color and it's separated enough to take and give it a beautiful floral design. I can do the same thing with plaids. I can do the same thing with fur and I can, you know, so it's, it's, it makes it interesting. To me, it gives it something more than just a flat painting. The hardest thing you're gonna learn when it comes to painting with lusters, if you want a three-dimensional form, is the first coat is always going to be flat. And the second coat is still going to be pretty flat. And not until you really get into the third, fourth, and fifth fire are you going to really start to develop some dimension and some shape. So um, that's your challenge. 
when I do, sometimes when I do landscapes, the challenge is to get the forefront to stand out as the forefront and the back to be further back. So it's um, lust that uh, one of the biggest challenges is going to be to make it not look flat. So now on this particular one, because I always dress them a little bit differently, I think I'm going to give it a midnight blue dress. Oh, do we want her on? I'm going to give her a little collar. Oh, oops, sorry, I went over her hand. Her dress actually starts here. So I'm going to give her, and I'm going to give her a little bit of a cap sleeve there. Come on down. Pull it down this way. I'm going to go down a ways because she's going to have a nice, long, straight dress. See, I painted right over her legs, right over her body because it will show through. It's transparent enough that it will show through. She's got to have a little bit of a flow to her dress. So I'm going to give her a little bit of um, folds because I want to just do something different. I'm going to, and hopefully this works for you guys to see. I'm just going to, well, actually, I love how the hem is right now. See, when you look at this, this is exactly how it's going to fire, except you're going to see color when it gets fired. And that's the cool part. And because this is a midnight blue, that's even though it looks white in here, it's still going to be blue. But my first thought was I kind of wanted to give her, I hate to wreck it. Um, I kind of wanted to get, oh, I didn't, and I guess what? I didn't get her back leg into the dress. Well, that's embarrassing. There, there, now she won't look like she's has a peep show or something ripped her dress costume uh, malfunction costume malfunction that's right um but i was going to give her maybe i have to do it with this one and i'm using my all brush because it's a dark color wipe it off but i was thinking of giving her some big old ruffles at the bottom and it's a lot of movement yeah why not put it back here is that too far back? I can wipe it back. But see, I'm pulling up and I'm giving it, there's light and dark. Oh, I don't like that. It's just for the side, for the effect. Because truly, I, I like her nice straight dress. So I would probably take this away. But it's just another way of giving you some ruffles and some fun, you know, I was kind of thinking of a was it Audrey Hepburn that had that black dress with the ruffle at the bottom? I might be wrong with the name. Uh, but I do like this particular look. I should wipe that away just so it's not distracting. All right. And that's your tissue paper. That's my tissue paper, yes. I am, I'm thinking. Does she need sequins? Yes. Ooh, let's get her, give her some sequins. Now there's several ways that I can give her sequins. I can just splash it on. The I'm using essence to splash on. Oh, I'm not very, it's, I must not have enough on here. Or you can't see it. Well, it's coming across very fine. Now it's starting to show. Can you kind of see it coming through? There are little white dots. Because if I place the dots systematically with my tiny little brush, I'll show you what happens. It gets to be too big. Now 
you can see them now on the camera but when i fire this those tiny little fine ones are really going to be what the sequins would look like and it's a lot it's a lot of fun to take especially with the sequins to give it that little bit of blitz um what else does she need how about a little bit of a Oh, and you know, you guys, I could have splashed her with turquoise sequins, or I could have splashed her with um, blue sequins. So you don't have to stop with just one color. You can do many things. And um, we're all afraid to do that when it comes to lusters. So I'm just going to put a couple of turquoise dots in here and see what happens. They were going to be bigger. Hopefully it's not it's random enough so that it doesn't look like I systematically put it in there. And now I'm gonna give her, I don't know, big fat bow up here. And it has to have a little bit of turquoise in there. But well, kind of even covers her face, which I kind of like. Does it look like a bowl? Even not, it's just meant to be ruffled or it's meant to be action or movement something to take and not let that dress be flat but you can still see her hand through there that her hand is touching it so and then when i fire this i fire it at 017 because the reason for 017 is if if i absolutely will not put any other technique onto this piece i will fire it at 018 or 019 if I put a technique, like let's say non-ping or um, uh, non-ping or eye relief or anything like that, then it has to be fired at 017. Otherwise, the colors will change if I start out at 019 and then I put some techniques on and now I have to fire at 017 to mature those techniques that background will actually change. It'll either become lighter or darker depending upon the colors that you're using. So you really have to plan ahead. And um, if you notice on this particular one, I have no techniques and this was fired at 019. And the original one was also fired at, well, actually this one was fired at 018. Um, now the next thing that has to happen is after I've fired this and I've cleaned it all up, you know, but before I fire this, or well, any of them, any of the pictures that I've shown you, you need, you really should remove the red lines with, um, because over here it'll fire off, but if on top of, you know, and you don't have to have red lines, you can use your graphite pencil, but on top of painted luster, that red line will stay. So I need to remove that so that you don't have that red line showing. So all the way up. But do you see where I painted over it with luster? It disappeared. It just dissipates, it makes it go away. But the ones that do show, and I'm gonna clean up some edges, I wanna make sure those are off. And I just, I'm taking that off with the luster essence. Yeah, I don't want her to look like she's got a these sticks sticking out of her. But these over here should all fire off. And clean up that extra line down there. The um So the, at the same time, I always like to do the shoes. So on the original one, I gave her bows and just a little bit of heel and sole because it's just a strappy little um, prom dress type thing. And on this one, I gave her red bottoms for her soles. What's the name of the but Manola? Is Manola? It? Is it a Manola shoe? I'm not sure. So I apologize. Um, I'm not up to date on that one. 
Um, but I do try to make sure that my colors are done at the same time for the shoe so that my shoe matches. So here I may take a smaller brush, the little, whoops, the little mini brush, wipe it off so it doesn't get globby and try to get my heel in and come across and lift up. And here we have a little bit more of a heel come across and go down so that it's, whoops, part of that line. I wanna keep it in that line. Another fun thing, you know, okay, so this would be my third fire. So we're gonna fire it and it goes in and when it comes back out and I want to get to this stage, I would resist this piece. Before I resist, we put turpentine on all over the, all over the lusted air, luster area. And that will also take away if there's any other red marks. We uh, turpentine that, we let it dry, make sure there's no water, you know, watery marks or anything because luster doesn't like water marks either. Um, once I've uh, let it dry enough, I will put my red resist on and let it dry. And that's when I do my background. So this is the one that has the background. And you also, while the background is still wet, you want to lightly, dry it, you know, give it a swish so that it looks like shadows, that the shoes look like they're melting into the, into the floor and um, while it's still kind of wet so that it looks soft. Because if I don't have that on the bottom, she's gonna look like she's floating. So we want, won't want her to float. We want her to be a stable dancing machine. And once we get, that done, then if I feel like it, I can go in and I can add other things to the background. But I prefer, because she's supposed to be the main object, to take and have a solid background. When it comes to this big, beautiful bow here, these colors were done with mother of pearl and a little bit of Irish yellow and a little bit of light blue pearl in here. And I just did this uh, little swishy thing here. And then after I fired it, I came back and I did some pen work with palladium. And I prefer palladium over platinum because palladium will always make, um, uh, will always be a little bit brighter and shinier. So when it comes to some of the main things when it comes to luster, uh, right now, the reason why I did all of this in the lusters made from the United States is because I can fire it all at one temperature and be confident that I, my colors are going to be good. Some of the old, old, old lusters, like if I were to have put a ruby in here or a carmine purple, first of all, I would have problems because one of the lusters, which would be German made and maybe really old, maybe it's a luster I pulled out that I have 20 years ago. It would be a lot thicker and I would have to now thin it. And even when I thin it, I would end up with these big deep ridges. And here, this, this little dark part is gonna show like a beautiful little wrinkle in her dress or a little fold and up here, this little ribbon, but it won't flake off because it's already thin enough to stay on. It's, um, it's, it's, to me, it's a lot easier, but if I would have done this at half of an old, old luster and half of the new, I'd have big ridges. And now in order to get rid of those big ridges, I'd have to tap them down until I got rid of it. So then when this is 100% dry, even if I let it dry overnight and, and then put it in the kiln, because I can touch it once it's dried overnight, when I rub my hand across and feel it, I should not feel any bumps. So when things flake off for you guys, it means that you have, um, if you let it dry overnight and you feel those bumps, You've got it on too thick and it's going to flake off or fire off. The best way if you do decide to let it stay overnight and you do feel those bumps, 
to get rid of some of those bumps or at least try to knock it down. There's no guarantee here, but I'll take a flat brush and put it in my turf and I'll just lightly work it and work it and work it until I get it to feel a little smoother. Only on the ridge, because if I go beyond the ridge, I've removed colors on both sides. So it's really a tough thing to do. So try to get it right the first time. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> okay. um, I do want to talk about a couple things. I do uh, want to let you know about, I have developed a, it's my price sheet. I know it's my price sheet, but this is an important sheet because what it does is it's been categorized by colors. And so I have my orange color, my blue color, my greens, pinks, and then kind of just the ones that I don't have a lot of. But what it does is it shows you that the amber is always going to be lighter than the Aurora. Because a lot of times you can open up a bottle or look at a bottle and you don't know if it's going to be super dark or if it's going to be light. So what's nice about this um, price sheet is it shows the intensity. So sometimes when I'm in class, I'll to ask the students to pull out a light color, and then I'll ask them to pull out maybe a medium color and then a dark color. And it's their choice to pull out the colors they want. So if they want a light color in orange, a dark color in blue, and a medium color in pink, that's fine because I mix up all the colors. I don't care. The reason for this is to so that they get, start to understand how to set up their, their painting setup and how to apply the lusters. So the lusters will always start with your lightest color first. So you start light and then you add, and the majority of your painting will be your lightest color. Your next color is your medium color and that will be less. And then your darkest color will be very small accents and it will be less and less. And the reason, I do it this way is once you've gone, if you start with the dark color and you add this light color afterwards, it's, you're not going to see it. It's just not going to happen. But this dark midnight blue will eat up. If you put too much on, it'll eat up those two other colors. And now you have just a dark blue blob. So you really have to be aware of how much you're applying, where you're applying it. and um, and practice, practice, practice. How's that? Then there's another thing I'd like to take and talk to you guys about is iPads Magazine is going to, um, is right now it's accepting the luster. It's a luster issue. So the luster issue is the 2021 iPad online com competition. And then there's also, so you have to designate which one you're going to submit to. There's also a competition online. So it's the iPad international competition. And what you need for that one is to identify that that's what it's for. Take a photo and submit to iPadInc.org, list your details, and um, uh, you could possibly win a, you know, a gold or a silver or a bronze. And, they also have some money awards. There's, you know, not everybody's going to win the money, but some will get a beautiful, nice reward for that. Um, include your entry fee for that particular competition. For the luster entry, you just need to, and this is part of your magazine, uh, is to submit before this August 16th or 15th. Probably I would do the 15th, so you're not doing it all on the last day. Um, and have your lusters and I have it listed. And then you can um, uh, be part of a, a bigger group that's showing off your different types of luster because um, it's a wonderful display. I know that recently they just had a different event. I'm not 100% sure of the name of it, but it was really fun to see what everybody had done. Now, this time, if you are entering in the competition and you have your entry fee, you get the magazine of all of the entry fees. So I'm just gonna show off mine. This is mine from last year. And I won a silver award on this one. 
and I won a silver award on one of my landscapes. And so it was really fun. Now I did enter this piece in our local state fair fine arts competition, which is different than our creative activity area. And I've been accepted. So I can win big awards here. So I know I can win a hundred dollar award for um, different com committees or community, uh, like let's say the ceramic department decides they like my piece best. I can win a hundred dollars. I can win a people's choice award. And so it all varies, but I can also sell this piece and I can sell it for a lot of money because they have a big dinner the night before and people go through and buy. So that's really, you know, we can all do a lot of really fun things. Um, it's just a matter of trying it, being brave, have curiosity to get to the next level because a lot of times we don't have enough curiosity to make us say, well, what if I try this? Oh, but it doesn't say in the book I should try it, so I'm not going to try it. So I encourage you all to try it, even if it's not written in the book. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. And I really appreciate you taking the time to watch and support me. And I hope someday we get to paint together. So thanks so much. And, and questions. I know I'm going to get questions. If anyone would like to ask Nancy a question, unmute yourself, please. And I think there are three questions that have been in the chat box that would be good for those people to ask Nancy. So go over there and unmute yourself so that you can ask the question. Okay, Nancy. Yes. Uh, it's Lynn Patton here. Um, I'm wondering your um, angular lines going across the body. Are they going to a uh, one point perspective? Is that how you got uh, the angles for them? Oh, the red lines? Yes. Um, the red lines? Well, sometimes I just, you know, I, I adjust this. Because you know my original figure is cut out on paper or copied many times, I, so right. sometimes I I cut her out and then I'll cut this right along this line where I think it should be, and I move her body to where I want her to be. So I don't have a specific line or number, but once I start with her shoulder, well, first of all, I always have to have the balance line, but once I start with her shoulder, then I know that this one has to line up. And so right. I have to cut that part and line it up. When I do her waist and I wanna give her a, the foreshortening, I cut it across there and I adjust the line. So this one was already uh, cut up and, and her perspectives were down. But usually I start with a 10 inch, you know, a piece of paper and line it up. And, and I have a, a grid work, which I apologize, I didn't bring that so I can keep kind of track where I'm at. And I do, so if you want to draw from a magazine, sometimes those magazines are even more out of proportion. So if you want to copy it, sometimes it works and sometimes it will not. And you, because the camera has taken a close up of one of the legs or something, you may not be able to translate it back into your painting. So sure. that's why sometimes I use my own and then I cut it up and make her move the way I want her to. So I have a front version and a back version of her. Right, it just looked like they were all going to one vanishing point. Oh, I couldn't hear that. It looked like it was, it was one, uh, the perspective started at one point, the single. Oh, single no, point. I had make that myself, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Some people may do that, but I don't. Okay, okay. Nancy, Hello, Nancy. question. <laughs> okay. Hey. Hi. Hello, Nancy. I'm Fresia from Bolivia. Hi, Fresia. How are you? How are you? I love your work. But Thank uh, you. I have one question because uh, some friends say all the time uh, that lasters are very toxic, very toxic. And I wanted to say to to my friends that uh, encourage to use the law, the lasters, no? But uh, that is the something uh, we we know uh, many years ago, 
that um, most of the, in the teachers here in South America say that it's very dangerous to use lasters. And uh, you are an expert. I wanted to know if that is true or, or this is I'll tell you. something, no? If they think they're very dangerous, then they need to stop using gold because they're made the same way as your liquid bright gold. All mm. lusters that come into the United States or that are made in the United States cannot come into the United States if they have lead. So if it's not, if it's an old luster, like let's say 15 to 20 years ago, you're now having those lusters are probably dangerous. Uh, I know that the greens and some of the orange had uranium in. So yeah, if they're still hanging on to those old, old, old lusters, they may be dangerous. But even anything that's when you work with dangerous products, you protect yourself, you use different things. So if I were to work with old lusters, I would have gloves on, a mask, an apron, and I would never be in the house to fire. In fact, I would take my cats out, any pet, even the fish out to fire. So most of the time, I take a lot of that to the uh, hazardous waste site and have them dispose of it because it's very old and it's questionable. Oh. All new lusters are food safe. Now, when it comes to food safe and using it, let's say this is a dish and I'm gonna put pickles on it with vinegar or with um, oh, lemon no. juice no. or anything, the lemon juice and the pickles, that will um, eat away at the luster. So eventually it'll go away. But if you're just putting cookies or you drink, my, you know, I, I have coffee mugs that I've used forever and they all have a gold band around the edge and they all have lusters and they're perfectly fine. Um, I did have a gal from Texas ask me to send her copies of the uh, chemical ingredients. And a lot of those paperworks are 10 pages long, but I sent her the necessary ones and she contacted me back and said, well, there's no lead in here at all. And I said, no, there is no lead, but there are other solvents and some solvents, if you're allergic to it may, you know, bother you. And it's the smell or, or maybe a rash or something like that. But if you're only using a little bit at a time, you're pretty safe. It's when you're using a lot. And in fact, yeah. I think that um, gold luster smells worse than lusters is my okay. personal opinion. Thank you. Thank yes, you very welcome. much, Nancy. Thank you. You're Hi, welcome. Nancy. It's Lynn Ambrose here. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. You, know Nancy. Yeah. you remember me, Nancy? I know, but I couldn't hear you. Oh. Because I don't see you. I don't get to see you. Really? Anyway, um, can you hear me now? I can hear you now. I want to ask you about the background of the finished piece. Yes. And the bottom part that looks like swirly water, did you use a different color or did you use the same color by smoothing it? I used a different color. I used, to be honest with you, I used two colors. I used the silver gray and the um, blue green pearl because you can see there's a little pearl eyes down here. Yeah. But it, it has to be, you know, within that. So when I started sponging this on, um, actually, it was the second coat, coat number two, that this was applied. And so I started sponging this on and I did that bottom before I got to the top because otherwise that would have been too dry to make it so soft and swirly looking. So you sponged it over the fired background totally from top to bottom? I didn't sponge it on, I brushed it on. I understand, but you already did the background fully before. Yes. I did okay. it once fully, fired right. it, came back, did a second coat, and then did the bottom with a, you know, while it was still wet. I hope that made sense. Yeah. Thank you, Nancy. Thank oh, you're you for so this welcome. Demo. Yes. Uh, this is Anna. Anna, hi. hi. Anna. How are you doing? Good. I was wondering, could you could you send us a picture of that? first tile, I'd be happy to send it to all the people that signed up with the lines that show your, your swag and sway sure, on the body. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. 
Okay. Okay. Anything else? What about your price sheet? Are you able to share it with us if we need to um, through messenger or email or something? I, you know, that's a very good question. I, I did a Zoom for the, I, you know, another group and I tried to share it. Um, that price sheet was done on a program that a lot of people don't have. So when I send it to them, it gets, um, it doesn't go through. So I'm working on that and I will gladly share that if you email me. I always put a paper copy in with orders, um, things like that. So don't um, don't give yeah, up on paper that. Copy would have been to perfect. take a long time. Uh, I will yeah. definitely send it. Um, Susan, this is yeah. Anna again. Yes. Uh, if Nancy takes a picture of her price sheet, um, I could send it to the people that yes. signed up yes. again. Yes. And you oh, could just okay. take a picture yeah. of it. Just take a picture okay. of it. And, I can do that. And also take a picture of the uh, drawing and we yes. can have that it, it, um, group. It will be uploaded on the iPad website because I can um, do attachments on that. So as you know, when I finish recording this today, it will go on the iPad YouTube museum channel, the YouTube. And then by yes. in the morning, it will be on the iPad website, which is ipadinc.org. And you click on the Zoom lessons channel. It'll show you the video. And it also has the PDF attachments that we've uploaded that you can take it and print. So um, we'll work with Nancy and see about adding two more of those uh, for the upload. Um, I wanted to let you know about the, the difference between the luster competition that we're having for the magazine. That's one of those fun things that Tana mm -hmm. Parks always enjoys uh, collecting. And so for the fourth quarter, we're going to have luster it. And we invite you to come up with something cute for the luster edition. And that will be in the magazine. The competition book that Nancy showed you where her beautiful pieces were featured the deadline to submit something to that is August the 16th. And it's a wonderful international competition. And as you saw, you will get a free book that will include your pieces this year for your, for your fee. You don't have to pay extra. So also that information in the link is on ipadinc.org. Do we have any more questions from the audience? Okay, well, we and ha that was a great, a great, great presentation, Nancy. Thank and um, it just wants to, us to go out and get some of those fancy shoes and and put on a fancy dress. So thank you <laughs> for your time, and it was so great to have such a, a large audience of participants today. So we will thank we will get together again soon. Thank you, thank everyone. You. Thank you, thank you. And if I couldn't hear you, thank I you. Mm -hmm. thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. Thank right you, here. Susan. Bye. Bye.